Oh, you can't tell by the way I use my walk. I'm a wounds man. No time to talk. What's the next bit? Welcome to the GCN show. Coming up, we round up all the results from the road, plus the Cyclocross World Championships from Tabor in the Czech Republic. Yeah, and don't forget, we've obviously got all our usuals, like caption, comments, <laughs> Drava, uh, tech, and tweet of the week. But uh, any of you with uh, eagle eyes out there might have noticed that uh, one person is missing from the, the settee, forward slash sofa today, and that's our very end Dan Lloyd. And you'd be right, he isn't here. Yeah, unfortunately, Dan, Dan's actually had a, a really nasty hair-related yeah. incident, uh, so he didn't feel like he was able to join us on the GCN show this week. Um, so we wish Dan all the best in his recovery. All the best, Dan. He's in Dubai. He, he's what? He's live. He's live in Dubai? Why didn't you tee us up? So he's live? Yeah. Dan? Dan? Yes, that's right, Matt. Actually, no, that, that's not right. We're not live. This is a, a recorded YouTube video, as it always is. But we are here in Dubai for the Dubai tour. Absolutely gutted that we couldn't be there with you for the GCN show today. But we were forced to come out here, and someone's got to do this job. So here we are. Tom and I are going to be doing our best to get as much content for you over the following week. Dan? It's actually getting a bit hot out here in the sun, so I think it's time to head back into yeah. the shade, Dan. Yeah. Back to you guys in the studio. We should probably spread out a bit, as soon as Dan's not here. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I think you might as well just make a, make advantage of of Dan's lack of presence, really. Yeah. But, uh, and it is it's a, it's a lovely bit of kit, this over, isn't it? Really, really comfy. There's been a huge volume of road racing over the last week. Sai, kick us off. Right. So first up, the traditional season opener, the GP Cycliste La Marseillaise, which is obviously down in the south of France, and that was won by Pim Lighart of Lotto Soudal complete other side of the world, and it was the inaugural CAD 11's Great Ocean Road Race. Now, Cadell himself, that was his last ever race, he finished a very respectable fifth, but the race was actually won by Janny Mearsman of Etix Quickstep. Yeah, and Rachel Nalen won the women's race for building champions team. She certainly did. Right, and in the Trofeo Mallorca, day one was won by Matteo Pellucci of IAM. Day two was won by MTN Quebec's Stephen Cummings, who just held off. Valverde at the top of a uh, little climb there. Uh, day three was won by Alejandro Valverde, and then day four, it was Pellucci again. I think it's always interesting this time of year when you see new sprinters come to the fore. I mean, look at Pellucci taking out uh, two bunch sprints, beating Andre Greipel, Ben Swift, those kind of guys. And of course, you know, thinking about uh, back down in Argentina, Fernando Gaviria putting away Cab on two occasions. I just yeah. find it fascinating that there are some new riders coming to the fore, but of course, the big sprinting superstars arguably aren't form just yet, are they? Yeah, interesting that you talk about Gaviria actually, because uh, rumour mill has been going to overdrive since the Tour de San Luis, and apparently, according to Cycling News, he's close to signing for Etix Quickstep, which means that uh, Gav, as we're calling him now, will be teammates with Cav. Can you imagine that? I mean, that's going to be right. Well, not Clash of Egos, only a young guy, but can you imagine being team captain in a bunch sprint and calling out Cav or Gav? I mean, yeah. it, could be, it could be an absolute nightmare for old Pat. It could be quite a double act there, Cav and Gav. It could be. Watch this space. What do you sign for ethics? Now it's time for comment of the week. Now last caption. <coughs> caption. caption. Ca thank you. Caption. Now it's time for caption of the week. Now last week we showed you a picture of Yanni Brakovic with a big piece of ice on his head. And the winner is Jason Harris, who said the stage was beyond epic. It was simply Titanic. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations, well Jason. Get in touch well done, and we will send you your GCN hat. Now this week's caption photo is this. Unfortunately, Dan's not here to get us started, so I'm going to have a crack. The uh, Czech Swanier was clearly new to the job. You have set the bar very, very that high good? with that, that good? I, that I didn't good. laugh, but I did laugh in rehearsals, but, but well done. Yeah, believe it or not, we do rehearse. No, we That's don't. Nice. We don't rehearse. We, don't. we just make <laughs> it up as we go along. <laughs> cut, cut that bit out, Mike. <laughs> that was really nice. No, but anyway, to enter, just simply put your caption in the comment section down below. That was grotty. GCN favourite Dan Craven won the Namibian National Championships at the weekend. At least, at least we think it was Dan. Mm. Uh, it's getting increasingly difficult to make a positive identification of the Europe car rider, given the uh, extent of that beard. It's amazing, isn't it? Apparently there's hedgehogs and all sorts living in there. Yeah, I would Probably. imagine so. Apparently anyone with a giant hipster beard could pass for Dan Craven these days. Believe it or not, actually, this photo here, that's not actually Dan. That is, in fact, a Lego Dan Craven imposter. 
This one did make us smile at GCN. This is a tweet from uh, at Steph NKP. And Steph says, at Dan from Nan at GCN tweet, I think they're missing a marketing opportunity here. And there's Dan, resplendent in his beard. No, no, that's not actually Dan. That's a Lego Dan. Oh, I thought it was actually Dan. No, no, that's Lego. So it's a, a Lego figure made to look like Dan rather yeah. than Dan himself. But it's incredible scenes here on, on Twitter. But uh, a sort of a perfect rendition. of even, If you look closely at this particular picture, there's even he forearm hair. So the amount of detail, the amount of time no, spent on that is, is, is astonishing. That's why I'm so glad that we're so clean shaven, Matt. No one can be imposters. I can't actually grow a beard. I'm 45 years of age, and no matter how hard I try, I cannot grow a beard. I'm still trying. I've, I'm holding out hope. I even like do that and nothing happens. It's <laughs> <laughs> what Wolverine does, yeah. you know. Better be careful, you might have like metal claws coming but, out your But metals. what I will do, uh, I'll, I'll try and grow a moustache and a beard if we get more than 2,000 likes. Oh, that's tempting. Can you imagine what that, I mean, it's going to be a bad beard basically, but I'll do it. I'll probably have to need to grow it about two weeks, but I'm up for it if you guys are. 2,000 likes, Matt will grow a... Attempt to grow a beard. Prepubescent moustache. Yeah. That was grotty. Tech of the week now. We've been sent this rather novel new bike light from a new company, Light Rider. Now you'd be forgiven for thinking that there's probably not all that much you can do to the humble bike light other than make it smaller or brighter or last longer. But these guys have put quite a nice new spin on things. Matt? Matt? Yeah, sorry Plus. about that, Si. Yeah, I had a problem with the fuse. That's all, right. all sorted now. No, thanks, Dan. No, but the, the premise with this light, Si, is, is it's very interesting. First off, they've got two lights at the front, one flashing light, and then uh, a normal light that fires a solid beam onto the road. But uh, the piece de resistance is the rear facing light that illuminates the rider. That is quite impressive. Now, in use, actually, it really does seem to work. You'd be better off wearing some kind of reflective clothing on your chest to really make that visibility improvement. It doesn't feel like a high-end light, but then it doesn't cost the same as a high-end light either, so uh, I think it's quite cool. Certainly, it also looks remarkably like part of the Starship Enterprise. Does it? Hmm. There you go. Three reasons to investigate. And at no batteries, you can actually plug it in for a USB as well. Yeah, they do a battery one as well, actually. They do? Yeah, yeah. So. All bases covered. Does it come with a mountain bracket as well, take it? Yeah, you can mount it. The women's race at the Cyclocross World Championships was an absolute nail-biter. There were still five riders in contention with just two laps to go. French woman Pauline ferrand Prevot looked like she was the strongest on the bike, but she did seem to struggle off it. Whereas the Belgian Sanna Kant looked the complete cross rider she is, but she was a fraction underpowered. In the end, it did come down to a sprint between the two, and Prevot proved the strongest. Yeah, it really was an exciting race, but in third place, and she had undoubtedly won some more fans, and that was Mariana Voss. And remember, she'd actually won the previous six editions of the Elite Ladies uh, Cyclocross. So, yeah, impressive stuff, but yeah. uh, I'm sure she'll be back. Oh, I just thought it was great that she was fighting for yeah. third, you know? Amazing. Well done. In a virtuoso performance that belied his years, Mathieu van der Poel took out the elite men's world cyclocross title this weekend, following his dad, who won back in 1996. Now, he did, his lead did look fragile throughout, but managed to hold on for the win. Yeah, his teammate Lars van der Haar got very close to him, actually, but then did fade almost within sight of the line and was actually himself caught and passed by the young Belgian rider Wout van Aert, who uh, had had a pretty much a torrid race of crashes and mechanicals, so at least managed to salvage a medal of some colour. The interesting, from a tech perspective, Si, uh, taking a nod from my, uh, from my cyclic exploits in, uh, in Niels, Belgium, three of the four gold medalists this year actually rode disc brakes, very much like myself. Yeah, you are quite a trailblazer, Matt. I mean, most of those people hadn't ridden break, disc brakes no. until they saw you mid-season. I mean, what I like, I just generally just like to embrace new technology and just run with it, and, and people generally follow Sai, so. Absolutely, yeah. Are. It's in! It's in! It's in! That actually worked! You certainly have blazed a trail recently with clipless pedals. I certainly have. Yeah. Just be steady. Things are getting really competitive in our Strava Club. And as you remember, Stephen Abraham, who's attempting to uh, ride the longest distance over the period of a year, again this week racked up an incredible 2,000 kilometres. Yeah, and in the longest ride, it was uh, Zip Polo, who uh, spent 38 hours uh, riding 620 kilometres. And then uh, Cormac from Sierra Nevada CC uh, rode 23,800 metres of ascent in Andalusia in Spain. Well remembered. Thanks. 
Despite an effort that took him to the very brink, Jack Bobridge failed his attempt to wrestle the world hour record from Matthias Brendley, falling 500 metres short with a distance of 51.3 kilometres. Yeah, he started out incredibly fast, averaging 54 kilometres an hour for the first 20 minutes. And then he did obviously pay for it later on in his attempt. But he was quick to praise Brandley's effort, said that it was the hardest thing he's ever had to do. Do you think he fell short, not just because of the pacing, but because of the, the, the really heavy beats that were laid down? In uh, I think so. Soundtrack? It's quite hard to moderate your effort to a hard house soundtrack. It certainly is. Well, Rowan Dennis is next up to attempt the world hour record on February the 8th. Would you reckon so? Think he'll do it? I think he'll do it, yeah. What do you think? Leave your comments down below. Oh. Cause we're living in a world of fools Breaking us down Ooh. Comment of the week now, and this one really caught our attention underneath the How to Prevent Saddle Sores video from a couple of months ago. Now, J-O-O-E-F-F-O-H has said, Creams, special shorts, I used to do regular 50 to 90 mile cycles all over Yorkshire with my mates as a kid wearing normal everyday wife fronts and jeans and I never got sore at all. Well, there we go. Perhaps more luck than judgment, but uh, admirable stuff there. But uh, I comment that took my eye, uh, Si, was from Tuby Gamer. Thanks, Tuby. Uh, Matt pursued the wrong career. He should have been a singing janitor and he's got the mop and the voice. Hit it, Matt. Oh, you can't tell by the way I use my walk. I'm a woman's man, no time to talk. You my boy, what you doing, man? Don't you do you do? I'm a dance to do. I'd laugh at that. Ha, 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 ha. Stand alive, stand alive. Coming up on the channel this week, contrary to appearances, Tom Last isn't actually here on the sofa with us. He's out in Dubai and he's going to be bringing us some great content every day direct from there. So check it out. Yes, that's right. We're going to be here at the Dubai tour shooting as much tech and speaking to the riders. So if there's anyone you'd like us to talk to or anything you'd like to see, leave your video suggestions in the comments below. But that, of course, is in addition to our regular service. And on Wednesday this week, how to sprint. When we think of sprinting, we think of the likes of Cavendish, Greipel, Cattell, Lloyd, Stevens and Richardson battling it out. But even if you don't fancy yourself as a bunch sprinter, it's a really important component of bike riding. Thursday is the top 10 ways to stay, to stay healthy and avoid getting ill. Right, I'm going to head in the shower. Do you want to just, just get yourself off now? Thank you. And Friday, it's base training, fact or fiction. Now, part of what got us thinking about this is that winter is not exactly the nicest time to ride your bike. It's ironic that you'd spend more time in the saddle at this time of year. And it's even more ironic that you'd be doing that, riding steadily and getting really cold. Yeah, exactly this in fact. Mm -hmm. Saturday, Tom will have a pro bike direct from Dubai for us. Sunday is our usual off the back. And then Monday, this is an audience request. We've actually got a video about how to change your handlebars. Uh, Tom's forgotten his passport. Tweet of the week this week comes from my mate Alberto Contador. Now Bertie tweeted the other day, I'm changing up my look, lol. Today, long coffee for a long day. All said with a rather interesting addition to his face. Yeah, that Gray looks pretty hair. cool. Dan Craven, watch out, Bertie's coming for you. I don't actually know. I've heard that Dan Craven wasn't actually in Namibia, he was, he was in Europe, and, but nobody really knows where Bertie was. Do you think there's been something? Well, I heard that Bertie was actually altitude training in Namibia, so maybe, maybe he actually did like, impersonate Craven and, uh, and win the Namibian Nationals. I mean, it's just, that's just, we've just thrown it right out there, haven't we? I mean, yeah. we just think we just sit back and watch. See? Oh, ah, come on! Let's go! But as ever, we're going to leave you with, what's it called? <laughs> Cool. This is a, this is a clue. That's the clue, okay. But as ever, we're going to leave you with Extreme Corner. That was grotty. There we go. Another nice. show wrapped up, Si. Yeah, cheers. Oh. Was good. Before we go, um, a mate of mine got into contact. I haven't spoken to him for 20 years. Yeah, yeah. I rode uh, as a... Uh, he rode in the same French amateur team as me, a guy called Dom. All right. Now, he lent me his bike in a, in a race just outside Paris. 
Um, bearing in mind, I'm six foot and he's about five foot two. So he managed to ride my 56 centimetre <laughs> frame all the way to the finish. So I finished right. the race. Um, but he had bad back problems uh, ever since. But rode the Tour de France in 1997, famously finished second from last. Oh, nice. What was his uh, surname? Estique. All right. Yeah, he rode for Super P, the, uh, the French, little known French team. But it's really yeah. nice to hear from him. Oh, yeah, that's quite cool. You're going to stay in touch? Yeah, I'll probably drop an email actually. But he really is a nice guy. You should meet him. Yeah, I'd like to. Oh, I forgot the end board. Forgot the end board. It's just to squeeze these oh. in. Oh, right. Right, so to see my extended Alberto Contador video, click here. Yeah, and for a great how to on finding the perfect roads to ride, then just click down there. And to subscribe, become a fan of GCN, remember it's absolutely free, click on Dan. Wherever he is. Dan? He's in Dubai. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah. Oh, he's in Dubai. Just, uh... just, just click, click on us.